But we turn to China now because a divorce court there has ordered a man to compensate his wife for the housework she did during their marriage. She'll receive $7,700 for five years of unpaid labour. It's generated huge amounts of debate, as you'd imagine, over the value of domestic work. Here's the reaction of one sociologist. It sends a signal to the public that housework and caregiving has values. And it, cannot be, it can be compensated and should be compensated in the event of divorce. A man can, cannot just take it for granted. I know many men would argue that men also contribute to the family by bringing back the money to the family, but they did not realize that upon divorce, their skills obtained from work are still appreciated on the labor market, but their wife's housework skills are not. Here's a different view of the ruling from a divorce lawyer in Shanghai. It's not really a, a compensation or a recognition of housework. It's more a compensation for the loss of career development uh, you know, over the white party, uh, generally the wives. Uh, you know, if you spend too much time at home, you, you lose the opportunity to develop your own career. Well, let's bring in BBC China media analyst Kerry Allen. Um, Kerry, fascinating story. Is there any precedent for this? Yes, absolutely. Yes, this has been a huge talking point today on Sina Weibo, China's version of Facebook or Twitter. Lots of people very much saying that, yeah, that women should be given compensation if they're literally uh, become housewives and they're unable to develop themselves. But also in China anyway, there is a culture, particularly in urban society, of um, what are known as breakup fees, which are where when a couple break up, and it's normally the boyfriend um, that will do this, uh, he will actually compensate his girlfriend for having invested time in, in their relationship. So he will give her kind of like a dowry of sorts. So he will give her a substantial amount of money um, for the time that she spent with him when she could have been spent with someone else. Presumably, though, not all men are convinced of that. No, not at all, no. This has been a big debate. Um, there have been a lot of media today uh, very much saying that, you know, there are a lot of men who are saying that they don't agree with this, they think it's wrong that women should be uh, subsidised in this way, but also a lot of women who are saying that actually they don't think this goes far enough. I mean, the amount of money that this woman's been given doesn't really cover a year's salary, and it wouldn't cover a woman um, who's been out of work um, for having not worked. Basically, um, yeah, the, the amount of money that she's been given, she would still have to work in order to earn a living. And she has a child as well. So, um, yeah, if she's not been working for a long time, it would be very difficult for her to get back on her feet. I'm interested that you mentioned she has a child. Do, do the courts take different views of people who are in a relationship but not married or have children or are married and do have children? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, this civil code as a whole is trying to discourage people from getting divorced full stop. Um, so there are other things that it factors in as well. Um, so the civil code, as well as looking at housework and, uh, and, and, and ch child care, um, it also is trying to introduce what is known as a cool off period so that couples spend 30 days um, thinking about whether they really want to get divorced. And so state media are heavily promoting this story because they want to send a message that if people get divorced, there will be consequences. Okay, Kerry, thank you very much indeed. Just before we wrap up this hour of Outside Source,